When making ground pork jerky, it's said that the loin is the best cut to use because it's very, very lean. Well, I don't have a pork loin, but I do have a pork butt that I bought on sale for just 88 cents a pound. We will be using the whole pork butt, and depending on who you ask, pork butt probably contains between 20 to 30 percent fat. Well, of course this is not ideal for jerky, but that's what we're going to do. Will it work? Let's find out. I debone my pork butt. I'm using everything but the bone and that little piece of the carotid artery you always find, and I cut out that ugly fat gland. Yes, the fat cap will be in the jerky. Okay, this pork butt's been coarse ground through the 4.5 grinding plate, and then I reground it through the 10 millimeter grinding plate. The jerky seasoning could have been added between the grinds or even before the grind, but today it's going in after the grinding. This is going to be pepper jerky using Legs Pepper Jerky Seasoning Blend number 133, and this packet came with some curing salt. So the seasoning package is enough for 25 pounds of meat, and that works out to 0.54 ounces per pound of meat for the seasoning. With the seasoning, you can put in a little bit more or you can put in a little bit less. Now the curing salt, on the other hand, should be measured as precise as possible, one ounce per 25 pounds of meat. So you really need some scales that can accurately measure very small amounts. The curing salt's necessary with ground jerky to prevent the growth of the bacterium Clostridium botulinum. In other words, this is an insurance policy to prevent botulism. Ground meat's in the high risk category. Some people seem to think that since they're grinding their meat at home that that mitigates all the risk. This is simply not true. Ground meat is in the high risk category, so use that curing salt number one. The curing salt and the jerky seasoning are mixed together, and then I add in a little bit of water. So this will help to evenly distribute the seasoning. You pour it over the ground meat and mix it up thoroughly with your hands. The curing salt needs time to work its magic, so when making jerky, 24 hours of cure time is preferable. I bagged up the seasoned meat. It goes in the refrigerator overnight. I went ahead and vacuum sealed my bags. After that 24 hours of cure time, then load up that jerky gun. The seafood racks from my Cook Shack electric smoker are perfect for making jerky. The meat mixture in the jerky gun comes out smooth and easy, and I think that little bit of water helps to smooth it out even though it will definitely add in some dehydrating time. I preheated the smoker to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I added in a couple of ounces of cherry wood. When the smoker reached 300 degrees Fahrenheit, the jerky was placed in the smoker for 10 minutes with the door closed. Now, the idea is to get that jerky up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a safe temperature, as quickly as possible and then immediately lower the temperature down to 170 degrees Fahrenheit and I left the door slightly open until that temperature hit the 170 degree mark. Now the plan is to flip the jerky and rotate the racks every two hours. Now I did the flip and rotate until 10 p.m. By then it had had eight hours of drying time and it was not ready. So I knew before I started it was going to be a long haul. Now I decided to lower the temperature to 140 degrees and come back the next morning to see what I had. Wasn't really sure how this was going to turn out, but the first thing in the morning the jerky was done. It passed the bin test, but more importantly it passed that taste test. Was it greasy? Why yes, yes it was. But to me, it's kind of like when you eat a piece of bacon, there's going to be some grease involved. I think it's at an acceptable level. Now the downside is that it's greasy. It'll definitely not store as long as lean jerky. I cut the jerky sticks in half, packaged them, vacuum sealed them up, and they're stored in the freezer. I take them out one pack at a time for eating. So the bottom line about making jerky with pork butts would not be suitable for that elk hunt that you're dreaming about all your life because it may turn rancid before you get home. But for jerky to eat around the house with temperature control storage, it's wonderful. You can't be in a hurry when making it for pork butts and it's not for long-term storage. But if you ever catch those pork butts on sale, then give it a try. Now all you gotta do is hit that like button on your way out, consider subscribing, and I hope to see you next time at Paw Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue.